Hi there, we're here with Craig Miller, VP of Marketing for Sequence to talk about LTE for IoT. Craig, Sequence has recently announced partnerships with Jim Mulatto and Verizon around CAT-M LTE. Can you talk about some of the initiatives that they are working on using Sequence IoT technology? Sure, uh, yeah, it's been an exciting week for us here, uh, unveiling a new uh, LTE for IoT chip called Monarch that's focused on release 13, category M, and uh, narrowband IoT, or M2 as they call it. Uh, what we announced with Verizon was a, a partnership that kind of extending our relationship with them that we've had for several years in this space to the release 13 category M product to, in, in order to sort of accelerate it, make sure that, uh, that commercialization is possible as soon as possible. And so uh, we're excited to work with them and, uh, and accelerate our development to deliver chips this year so we can start testing and trials with, with Verizon and other, uh, other operators worldwide. And then with Jamalto, Jamalto is a leader in machine-to-machine -machine modules and they've uh, just made a commitment to work with our Monarch architecture to develop uh, the next generation of IoT modules using our LTE chipset. Sequence collaborated with Verizon on a Cat1 LTE products last year, uh, leading to Verizon launching the world's first Cat1 network. How is Sequence working with other operators using Cat1 and uh, maybe even Cat-M as well? So uh, yeah, we were excited about last year, uh, early in 2015, we launched Calliope, which is our category one LTE chipset. Uh, and uh, yeah, we worked with Verizon to certify that chip, modules, and actually commercial devices. They're now launched into the network uh, on Verizon. We're also excited to uh, have announced this week that we're working with Telstra in Australia to trial the uh, technology there. So we expect that'll lead to commercial deployments in, in uh, in Australia. We are also working unannounced so far, but working with uh, operators in, uh, in Europe and in Japan uh, and elsewhere. So we expect category one is uh, essentially a worldwide thing now, and, and we're excited to have kind of been the first to, to push that technology out there. So you'll see other uh, news and other operators deploying it. And in the US already, you've had public uh, disclosures from T-Mobile as well as from AT&T that they, uh, they are category one ready. So it's, a, it's a, a nationwide phenomenon in the US and we expect it'll be a worldwide phenomenon as well. So how do you think the marketplace for IoT applications will evolve uh, with category M? Yeah, I think category M uh, release 13 introduces some very interesting new capabilities in the network and in the device that enable uh, you know, IoT applications and use cases that really prior to this technology existing weren't possible. And this is things like sensors and very low data use uh, applications in smart cities and smart home, uh, industrial IoT, and even consumer wearables, healthcare. There's a whole set of applications, some of them are very uh, high volume and, and very uh, important, I think, uh, to advancing IoT. And Category M brings technologies around power conservation, uh, around uh, long sleep cycles so that the devices can connect very, um, very infrequently yet still be uh, connected to the networks essentially um, and still leverage all of this LTE network that's been built out over the last five years or so uh, that these operators have invested billions of dollars in spectrum and networks and, and connectivity. Now that technology comes down to the price point, the power consumption, and the kind of use case support that's required in the uh, Internet of Things. So applications on Category 1 and applications on Category M are going to be different yeah, classes? Yeah, we think so. Uh, uh, category 1 is a, is a 10 megabit type uh, capability, which is still fairly high speed. It's around, you know, it's 3G class. We kind of view Category 1 as sort of obviating or displacing the need for 3G connectivity. Uh, and there are applications in security, surveillance, digital signage, uh, industrial routers and, and things like that 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 still needs some speed, um, but you know need cost and power efficiency as well. And then category M introduces and narrowband IoT introduces these two new classes or uh, UE categories that 3GPP calls that even come lower in speed and lower in uh, in power consumption. And those enable battery powered water meters, uh, 
sensors, you know, for industrial and, and agriculture and smart cities. So there's a whole class of different applications, and we think these two these technologies will coexist for years to come. So, given all that, how will uh, Category M compete with uh, proprietary solutions like Sigfox and Lura in the marketplace? Right, it's a good question, and for sure. Um, I think Sigfox and LoRa and some of these uh, proprietary, low-power, unlicensed, uh, wide area network technologies, they've kind of created some buzz in the industry. Uh, in a way, it's, it's made it um, sort of sexy to think about connecting all these new things. So we're, we're happy about that, and we think they'll continue to have a, a role to play at the very low end of the market. Um, what Category M does, though, and uh, M1 and M2 both, which are uh, sort of you know, a, a low, uh, low speed and even lower speed capable uh, technologies, they, they approach the kind of functionality you're seeing in say a LoRa application or even maybe a Sigfox. And they approach the price, the hardware price points that those uh, technologies are suggesting. But they do it in a, uh, we believe, a much more uh, robust fashion because you're on a licensed spectrum managed network that's very reliable, provided by all these LTE network operators. Um, I, there's a, we believe, a lot of advantages in terms of uh, availability, reliability, security, et cetera, that maybe isn't um, a foregone conclusion in some of those proprietary technologies. And, uh, and we think the extension of LTE-M in release 13 brings this, uh, this technology and this network availability to uh, using LTE the same way uh, Sigfox and Lora and these other technologies are uh, approaching the market. Mm -hmm. What is it about category M that makes it a kind of more power efficient, cost efficient spin on the LTE standard? Right. Yeah, it's, um, uh, you know, the 3GPP recognized several years ago that they needed to take steps to be able to address this whole category called Internet of Things, machine to machine, um, and, and bring the modern, you know, network technology of LTE to bear on those uh, applications that don't need maybe 150 megabits of throughput, right? and that are very power sensitive, uh, you know, need to run on batteries for years at a time. So I think in general, what, what came in release 13 was a complexity reduction in the spec for the, the modem, if you will, or for the, uh, the, the connectivity solution. Uh, things like going to half duplex FDD instead of full duplex simplifies and reduces cost. Uh, redu significant reduction in the peak throughputs down below one megabit per second. Uh, for instance, category M uh, in half duplex tops out around 375 kilobits per second, much closer to you know, a 2G type mm -hmm. of technology. And, and then category M2, or what most people are calling narrowband IoT these days, uh, it's down around 50 kilobits per second. So you have these two new classes of, mm -hmm. of connectivity that significantly reduced uh, cost, complexity, uh, size, uh, and power efficiency. There's also features in the spec, release 13 spec, to make it possible for these devices, say on a water meter, to go to sleep for weeks at a time, wake up, transmit a message or some usage data to the cloud or to the network, and then go back to sleep and stay asleep for weeks at a time. Whereas in a mobile phone or a tablet, you're constantly on that network, constantly. So it's very much more power hungry and now we've solved the problem by, by applying reduced complexity in the modem as well as uh, capability in the network to put these devices to sleep for long periods. And those are important attributes in, in a lot of these IoT applications. Great, well thank you so much for taking us through this kind of snapshot of LTE for IoT. Happy to have you Dan, thanks for coming. Thanks.